Hello, um, welcome to the Basic World Blog 2012. I'm Claire Hart from the Basic Online team, and today I'm talking to Chia Suan Chong. She is a general English teacher, business English teacher, and teacher trainer at International House. She's a conference addict, Twitter addict, and avid blogger. She's also the presenter of um, this month's Basic Weekend Workshop. It was on the subject of uh, politeness and pragmatics in ELF, English as a lingua franca. And um, Chia's workshop has also inspired a lot of comment and uh, some blog posts. So it's great to have the opportunity to chat to Chia today and to follow up on some of the points she made in her workshop and also to discuss some of the points that people have been raising in the last few days. So thank you very much for joining us, Chia. It's great to talk to you. And thanks for having me, Claire. You're welcome. Um, so let's start with our first question. So my first question is, um, teachers need to be kind to students and respect the fact that they come from different cultures with different conceptions of politeness. But what happens when the learners go out, start communicating internationally, and realize that their conception of politeness is very different to that of their international partners? Um, where's the boundary between acceptance, tolerance, and ensuring that the learners can communicate effectively? What do you think? Um, absolutely. I, I think that um, we don't do enough of this in the classroom, do we? Um, we were so sort of um, focused on teaching um, language almost for language's sake sometimes, and, and, and we kind of neglect the, the other um, pragmatic issues and um, perhaps even politeness issues that might arise, and, and students or learners uh, leave the classroom, get into a sort of an intercultural scenario and realize that um, they are not quite equipped to deal with those situations. I think um, mainly what we should really be looking at is, is perhaps um, training our learners to make use of communication strategies rather than focusing on just the language that they're using or teaching them formulate language to deal with situations. The link between politeness and formulaic language is one that is often seen in course books, but perhaps we should be considering um, other ways of dealing with politeness and the strategies for dealing with politeness. I think the, the main idea um, that we should be uh, focusing on in the classroom is that of empathy. Um, and empathy includes um, accommodation strategies, learning to adapt to their interlocutors, um, and sort of the principle of charity that I was talking about during the online workshop, one where um, two, two non-native speakers are able to um, have mutual sympathy and perhaps mutual understanding for each other's difficulty in communicating, second learning accordingly. I think this is a good way of thinking about it. We as language teachers get really quite good at um, understanding what our students say and what they are trying to mean. Um, in fact, we get so good at it that sometimes trainees look at us and go like, how did you know what that student was trying to say? And I'm sure all teachers relate to that. Um, we were really good at also speaking to students in a way where they would understand us um, and yet at the same time um, we, we speak to them in a way that helps build their confidence and encourages them to, to speak even more. Now how do we teachers learn to do this and what are the little factors um, that make up the way we communicate with students? Can we break these factors down um, and then teach that to our learners in terms of accommodation and adaptation strategies? Um, for example, could we teach them um, to paraphrase and grade their language according to the person they're speaking to. So we might have an advanced Italian learner communicating with a less proficient Spanish speaker or a less proficient Chinese speaker of English and um, they might re realize that they need to grade their language in order to be understood by the Chinese um, less competent Chinese speaker. Um, also using strategies to create rapport, show interest in their, in their partner, um, being curious about them. And I think this all includes doing things like commenting on what your interlocutor is saying. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's, that's really, really awful, isn't it? Um, and also being able to ask the right questions to follow up on what they're saying and also showing interest in what they're saying by asking the right questions, sort of being the, the hostess 
of um, a very successful party. I think these are the kind of strategies that we should really be raising awareness of and, and helping students with in the classroom and not just, you know, focusing on formulaic language. Does that answer your question? Yes, great. <laughs> so this brings me nicely on to my next question. Um, how can we as teachers teach students how to create um, the right impressions? Can we give them guidance, even if we can't teach them how to do it? And if so, how, how can we do this in, in practical terms? I think guidance is, is probably um, my preferred word. Um, the word teach so, sort of suggests a lecture-style presentation uh, where, where there are absolutes as to this is polite and this isn't polite. This is the right thing to do and this is the wrong thing to do. And, and I think, in, as we can see in intercultural politeness and intercultural interactions, that there really isn't a right and wrong. That you know, Interaction is fluid, it's dynamic, it's, 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 it changes from interaction to interaction, from contact to contact. I think what we really could do instead is guide them by, by workshopping scenarios and contacts where that students are likely to encounter and of course this really depends on the needs of your students um, if you know that they're likely to encounter say um, Germans in meetings then you might um, deal with that context and that scenario um, first perhaps by asking them the kind of image that they wish to portray of themselves um, what what facet of their personality would they like to convey um, getting students to discuss a particular situation or context through a simulation, a role play, or even a case study. Um, getting them to play it out as to how they would do it. Getting observers and the students involved in a role play to then discuss whether the image they wanted to convey was successfully conveyed, um, or if not, what kind of image was being conveyed, why, etc., etc. And I think by discussing these issues, Automatically, we are raising awareness of, you know, the different um, aspects of pragmatics, the, the different aspects of politeness. In fact, not just politeness alone, but intercultural communication and perhaps getting students to draw their own conclusions and, um, and, and reformulate their own behavior and, and, and their own, the language that they're using as well in order to achieve the, um, the goal, the perceptions they intend to create. Okay, so also raising their awareness of how they are or may be perceived by others. I think that's exactly it, that, that raising awareness of, um, of the differences between different cultures, the differences in the way politeness is being realised, the differences in um, pragmatic rules and the differences in norms, um, not just from culture to culture but from situation to situation, context to context. And by raising awareness of such um, issues, I think students are able to um, make their own decisions and make up their own minds as to how to deal with them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, great, yeah. So another point I have um, connected with what you just said is how much um, lesson time should we be spending? How much lesson time should we be devoting to these kinds of activities? What do you think? I think that's a really difficult one um, to be prescriptive and saying, you know, we should devote 20% of our lesson time to teaching pragmatics. Yeah. This is something really difficult to say, isn't it? But in general, do you think it should be a significant component, a not so significant component? Or do you think it depends on the learners, depends on the course? What I would say is that I think that... Um, intercultural pragmatics and politeness is often quite neglected in in teaching um, especially in general English and perhaps with some business English teachers as well um, there perhaps might still be an idea of, of telling students um, essentialist notions of this culture is like this and that culture is like that I think all we can say is we should definitely give some attention to pragmatics and politeness issues and intercultural issues mm -hmm. in the classroom and perhaps guide students towards noticing them. Um, I can't tell you how much we should focus on. It really depends on the learner's needs. Um, but definitely let's not ignore it. Okay, okay. Um, I also wanted to ask you, um, would you accept that simplifying language for ELF contexts can also result in unsuccessful communication and how do we strike a, how do we strike a balance between being too simple and being using 
unnecessarily complex language. Okay, Claire. First of all,、yeah. let me debunk this myth—a myth that I myself held for quite a while. Okay.、Um, That elf is about dumbing down language. That elf is about simplifying language. That elf is about you know、um, <laughs> um, getting rid of complex language. And I don't think that sort of、um, embodies what elf really should be about.、Um, in the early days of elf, when there was a lot of talk about you know、um, the lingua franca core, I myself had huge issues. In terms of, oh, are, are you basically saying that we should dumb down what we teach? Are we? Are you basically saying that we should teach he want instead of he wants? And、um, and for quite a while, I was quite irate about this.、Um, and in fact,、um, the pre-conference event at ITFL、um, Glasgow, where I'll be speaking,、um, my talk is basically about、um, my journey in Elf. And, Lots of people consistently seem to think that Elf is about dumbing down the language and simplifying the language, and I was one of those people who thought that right at the beginning. Um, um, but having said that, if you look at Elf research now, it is sort of it's, it's departed from the idea of、um, the lingua franca core, if you may,、um, and it's moved towards the other skills that an Elf user would need, and that includes. Code switching skills, translation skills, accommodation skills, adaptation skills—skills that a native speaker might not need in a native speaker to native speaker conversation. Which makes me feel as if elf communication actually is much more complex rather than simplistic.、Um, and so, no, elf isn't about simplifying the language that we use. It is about adapting to the person that we are talking to. And not just adapting to their language ability, but adapting to their culture.、Um, Mike Hogan gave me a really, really interesting metaphor, which I would really like to use at this point. Actually, he said that、um, Elf is about teaching students or learners to recognize when they are out of their own fishbowl, and then teaching them to survive. Out there, out of that fishbowl, and I think that that's exactly what it is: raising awareness so that students notice when、um, situations are not within the comfort zone, when things are going wrong. Being able to notice why they're going wrong, and perhaps being able to attribute the fact that perhaps cultures are different and norms are different, and then once recognizing what norms are different, then being able to survive and adapt accordingly. I think that should be what it's all about. Great. Well, I think that's a perfect note on which to end this interview.、Um, it only leaves for me to remind you all that Chia will be speaking, as she said, at the B pre-conference event at IETF for Glasgow on Monday, the nineteenth of March.、Um, so, thank you very much for talking to us, Chia. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks for having me, Claire. You're very, thank you're you. You're very welcome.